Good morning, Chris here with OptionMillionaires.com with an option trade for this morning. So we're looking at EFA, and the reason why I'm going to do EFA, I'll tell you in just a second. But this is basically a it's an index fund for everywhere outside the United States. So EFA, you see the letters EFE right here. That stands for Europe, Australia, and the Far East. So that's your index fund. You get those three components. But I want to actually, I'm looking for a trade that will not be correlated to making like American stock trades and also one that is liquid enough that we can actually trade options on it and also one that gives us some exposure to Europe. So <clears throat> this is the this is the actual components of the index that's attempting to follow right here. So if I move down I want to see the countries so if I go we'll just go back here so we see that the top countries of this of this index what they're comprised of basically United Kingdom Japan Australia and then we have a bunch of American ones including France and Germany I mean a bunch of European ones including France and Germany Hong Kong Netherlands and then Spain so we do have a good amount of European exposure here, but we also have exposure to uh, Japan. So, like, if I do, if I go over to the Japan fund, chart looks pretty much the same as the EFA fund. So, I'm fine with trading EFA. So, how do we actually trade this? Well, first off, this is a long-term trade. Actually, it's a long-term pattern for a shorter-term trade. So, we have what would be described as a classic head and shoulders formation where we have our shoulder right here we have our shoulder right here and we have a head right here and it actually gives us a price target if we just measure top to bottom of for this it gives us a price target of just about 27 bucks so just slightly below the um, slightly below the March 2009 low I know pretty pretty uh, scary stuff right so that's what I'm too concerned about right now so what I'm actually looking at is if I go to like a simple two-year chart get rid of these drawings right here we're going to see that we're actually right at a uh, resistance level so if I just draw this right down you see that we're up in this bunched up area right here we're sitting right at a resistance zone and see if this actually gives us a kind of Fibonacci retracement probably won't um, do we have anything? No, not really. It's just a simple trend line uh, retracement zone. So that's the first thing I want to look at. So we expect it to go down, but we're not 100% sure. There's no signal yet. But what I really want to look at is the implied volatility. So if I go out to this two-year chart, you notice that implied volatility, the relative, which is the relative um, expensiveness or cheapness of put and call options, it's really low. It is very low. So how do we actually exploit one of these things? Well, first, looking at these, um, at these charts, I like the fact that the implied volatility, when there's any kind of uh, downward movement, it suddenly spikes up. So how are we going to take advantage of this? We're going to do a straddle strategy. So like I said, this, um, I, I like the strategy a lot because it's not correlated to like some long and short trades because we're not going to be trading the price we're going to be trading volatility now if you want to go short this go ahead it's probably uh... it's probably easy to borrow too yeah it's easy to borrow so you can short it so how are we actually going to do this straddle strategy so today it looks like i'm going to get rid of this today it looks like it's going to open around fifty one forty nine so i am just going to I'm going to edge my bet ever so slightly and I'm going to pick the 51 strike price. So, if I'm going to go to 51, I want this to be far out of far out in time because I don't want any time decay or at least very minimal. So, I go here, I go to a straddle. It's nice that the spreads are nice and tight here since the stock's liquid. And the entire strategy is going to cost us about 12 bucks 43 cents. Or after today's open, it's probably going to cost just a bit less. So let's just say 12 bucks and 30 cents. So it's going to give us this payoff that looks like this right here. 
And you see, if we're actually going to trade this for price, we need the price to move a lot. We need to move either down to 39 bucks or up to 63 bucks to become profitable. But we don't want to. We don't want that to happen. Our goal is not to break even. Our goal is to make some money. So we're playing on volatility here. So if I go back here and move this down so we can actually see it. You see this one I've highlighted right here. I'm going to bring up a theoretical pricing calculator and you see there's this new tab now that says Theo price which it's saying 1242 so that's the theoretical price right now. Now let's go back here take a look at this um, at the option volatility which like I said it's very low it's sitting right around this 20 level it'll probably go up a tiny bit this morning because uh, it's going to open a bit lower but if we say, well, we expect it to get back to the level here, we expect a downswing to come up, and it, let's just say it goes up to 40. So it goes up to 40. If we go back to this, plug in our theoretical pricing calculator, a 20% volatility increase, suddenly the price of the option with zero price movement, so everything else equal, zero price movement, but a higher implied volatility, the price of the option goes up from 12 bucks 42 cents to 21.81. So simply by the nature of volatility, we almost made 100% on this trade. Okay, so what's the time frame for this trade? So we are going to hold on to this trade till I'd say the end of September or the end of October. It's your choice. Um, if we go over here and we just say, okay, I'm going to hold until let's just say I'm gonna hold until the third week of October so expiration week that is going to give us a maximum risk on the trade of seventy two dollars just about so seventy two dollar maximum risk and if volatility gets that high we make one thousand one hundred that's fantastic and the only the only risk that we have is pretty much time decay because just looking at this how much lower could volatility get Okay, I see it's gone down to about 16 at one point. No, it's gone down to about 18 at one point. So that would correspond to, if I go back here, if it goes down 2% and we do get our, our, um, our volatility down, that would correspond to an extra, let's see, $100 loss. So it gives us $176 maximum loss versus a $1,000 gain. That's still fantastic. So that's how we're going to trade it. Do not trade it for price. When you're done with the strategy, exit both sides. All right. So the exit both sides. Don't be turning this into some completely bullish or bearish strategy, or suddenly it's going to become correlated with the rest of your portfolio. So that's how we're going to do it. You trade for volatility. Wait for uh, volatility to go up, and then get out with some nice uh, with some nice money. Now, if you do find yourself in October and you still like the strategy but it's becoming uh, and it's becoming profitable all you need to do just take the same option and roll it over so we have the January 14 option here maybe in, in three months you'll have like a March 14 option you just sell your January's and then you buy the March's just to minimize time decay so there's your strategy enjoy it and happy trading